I want to talk about yield to maturity. Yield to maturity is the rate of return on a bond. And you can simply solve it by setting up the bond pricing equation. The bond's price equals the present value of the future cash flows. And that's, that's how we price the bond. Now, what do we do with that? We're going to find the interest rate that makes this present value of the cash flows equal to the price of the bond. So if we were writing out the equation this way, you get a coupon in the first year divided by 1 plus R, plus you get a coupon in the second year divided by 1 plus R squared, plus all the way out dot 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 all the way out to year n where you get the coupon and you also get back the maturity value and so we're looking for the r that makes this equation true now sometimes we refer to this as the internal rate of return on a bond so if you've studied some corporate finance you may have heard that term if you look on your financial calculator there's an IRR key which you possibly could use to do this calculation all right let me start with the simplest case and I'm gonna start with the case of a zero coupon bond a zero coupon bond is is a bond that makes no exp explicit interest payments so it's basically one lump sum received in the future now in the case of um, in the case of a zero coupon bond you're not getting any interest but you're paying a discounted price for the bond so the difference between the price you pay and the maturity value is your interest so what does that look like what's the what's the bond pricing equation going to look like the price of the bond is simply going to be the maturity value divided by 1 plus the interest rate raised to the nth power. So we can solve for R. And this is pretty straightforward. Actually, you may recall that this is exactly the way we calculated a return um, when we knew the present value and the future value. So let me just work out the algebra here. Let's multiply both sides by 1 plus R to the N and divide both sides by PB. So I'm going to have 1 plus R raised to the nth power equals the maturity value divided by the price of the bond. And then we want to get rid of this exponent here, this power, and how do we do that? We raise this to the 1 over n power. That will be, for example, if you took, if you squared the number and then you took the square root, you'd be, you just have the number. Anything you do to one side of the equation, you have to do to the other side. So raise this to the 1 over n power, that disappears, and so we get 1 plus r equals MV, maturity value over the price of the bond, raised to the 1 over n power. And we just subtract 1 from both sides. So R is going to be equal to maturity value over the price of the bond, raised to the 1 over n power, minus 1. So let's take a look at an example. Suppose you pay, suppose the maturity value for the bond is 1,000. The current price of the bond is $375.63. And the bond matures in 10 years. So let's say n equals 10. So what's the what's the return going to be? What's the yield going to be? It's going to be using this formula. 
1000 divided by 375.63 to the 1 over 10 power minus 1. So let's see what we get. 1000 divided by 375 and 63 cents. And then we want to raise it to the 0.1 power and then just subtract 1. And so we get 0 0.10286, so I'll just round off to 29 or 10.29 percent. Okay, now suppose we have a coupon bond. If we have a coupon bond, it's a little more complicated. We're not going to be able to solve it out explicitly. And so let's just look at an example. Suppose we have a 6% coupon rate. We have a maturity value of 1,000. And say the bond matures in 10 years. So we know that we're going to get $60 a year in interest, 6% of the $1,000 maturity value. So the pricing equation is going to look like this. $60 divided by 1 plus R plus $60 divided by 1 plus R squared. And you'll get $60 in that final period, 1 plus R to the 10th power, plus you'll get back your $1,000 maturity value. Now you can't solve this algebraically, but what you can do is you can use your financial calculator to solve this out. And in fact, we probably have done this. What do you have? You know that n equals, well, clear the time value of money workspace, so second clear TVM. 10 is the number of periods. I didn't give you a price of a bond, so I've got something missing here, so we can't solve that out. Let me give you a price of a bond. The price of the bond, we'll say, is $1,123.80. So we need the price of the bond, 1, 1, 2, 3, and 42 cents. And again, as I've said many times, the present value and the future value have to have different signs. So I'm going to put this in as a negative. In fact, because you're buying the bond, think of it that way. So it's money that you're spending. The payment is $60 and the future value is 1000 or the maturity value and we simply compute the interest rate and we get 4.44 percent so quite easy to do if you're using the financial calculator let me show you one more thing you can use the one more way you can calculate it on the financial calculator you can use the cash flow worksheet now to clear the cash flow worksheet you can't just hit clear you have to bring up the cash flow worksheet and you have to hit second clear worksheet CF0 is the cash flow at time period 0 that's the same as present value so that's the price of the bond eleven hundred and twenty three dollars and 42 cents and we're going to put that in as negative make sure you hit enter so it records it you're going to get sixty dollars in interest and you're going to get it and F stands for frequency you're going to get it for nine periods now you could put this in nine times but there's no reason to the frequency is nine hit enter the last cash flow in year 10 is going to be sixty dollars plus one thousand so it's one thousand and sixty Enter, 
Okay, frequency is just one. Hit IRR and then hit compute and sure enough we get the same answer. So there are a couple of ways you can do this on the financial calculator. You can also do this in Excel as well, but you can't do this. There's no explicit formula. There are some approximation formulas, but there's no reason to approximate the yield to maturity when you have a financial calculator that will give you the exact calculation.